Hello and welcome to episode 270 of Growth Marketing Toolbox. I'm your host, Nicholas Scalise, and today I'm joined by Alexandra Korchinska, who is the CMO at GetResponse. If you haven't heard of GetResponse, they are a MarTech global company providing email marketing and marketing automation tools. And Alexandra is a data-driven marketer with vast experience in SaaS and tech marketplaces at companies like Uber, MarTech and healthcare startups, and much more. She's also a graduate from Harvard Business School and holds a master's degree in data science from the Warsaw School of Economics. Alexandra, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. How's everything going? Thanks a lot. Uh, it's going actually quite well, despite the, the whole global situation and the turmoil that we've had, like in Europe and in the US. But yeah, it's going going well. But I hope like, you know, uh, I hope that the news about the recession and the current situation won't actually eventually be as, as bad as they, they seem to be. So uh, but overall, like in the SaaS world, like in, in my like market world, it's, it's, it's OK, but I'm a little bit scared to see like what is going with the global economics right now. Yeah. It is. It is wild. You know, in some ways, though, marketing is more important than ever as there's an economic downturn on the horizon. Usually you see a an uptick in uh, people sort of needing more marketing services or needing tools um, related to marketing so that they can sort of get more out of their um, current business. Uh, so on that note, you know, GetResponse has been in the business for a very long time, serving so many different types of businesses. Uh, I'm sure most of our listeners have heard of GetResponse. I mean, who who hasn't? Uh, but for anyone who hasn't heard of it, or maybe because it's changed over the years, right? It's, it's much more than just email marketing now. Maybe give us a quick overview of what GetResponse is. Yeah, sure. So basically, GetResponse is this like marketing automation, email marketing platform, as you also introduced at the very beginning. And we started just as email marketing. And so we evolved actually to full like marketing automation, both for e-commerce and like B2B companies with with what you, with, and with this platform you can basically both generate leads, convert leads, uh, generate more sales and optimize your whole funnel. Um, so, and GetResponse as a platform is also offered in the freemium model. So that's actually quite a good news specifically for starting yeah. entrepreneurs that you can just use it for free at the very beginning before you're going to get like a huge list size. Um, and we are serving both, you know, like the smallest SMEs company as well as big enterprises to help them just get better ROI of their marketing actions. Yeah. And, and so we're going to dig into some of those use cases and some email marketing best practices. Uh, before I do so, I, I wanted to just uh, hear a little bit more about your background. I think you have a fantastic uh, background. You've worked at companies like Uber and you've been doing this for a while. Um, how did you end up at GetResponse? And tell us a little bit about your marketing journey. Yeah, sure. Uh, so basically, actually, I started, uh, yeah, I, I think I should like start with, with my uh, education, like first, because I was always into like, you know, data science, math, and like, you know, data driven IT and tech generally. Uh, and then I was also like, kind of like creative person and I landed in marketing, like in very data driven marketing as I could like mix it both, right? So like I could like mix my creativity and I could also like mix my uh, solid data foundations uh, that I have got also from my uh, economic, like from my uh, academic background. Uh, and actually I've started with, uh, with some startups um, uh, in the IoT industry, in the sleep tech industry. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so actually I've run like those like, 15 years ago, like 12 years ago, something like this. Uh, one of the first uh, most successful C Kickstarter campaigns uh, mm -hmm. with, with our IoT like sleep mask that was kind of like the mobile app, the web app. So uh, that was super, super exciting. And that was, you know, like at a very young age, I had the opportunity to, uh, to create the go-to-market strategies and like try to scale the, both the web app and the IoT tool, uh, IoT mask on the US market and also on some Asian market. Markets. Uh, so that gave me like a lot of diversity when it comes to understanding various cultures mm -hmm. and like various, you know, top of the funnel techniques uh, for uh, for growing startups. Uh, and then actually from from the startup, uh, like uh, I went like to, to another like startup web, but I wouldn't like say that is like that was a startup at this at this uh, this point. So actually, I, I went to to Uber to build mm -hmm. Uber, Uber Eats from scratch. So I was oh, one wow. of the first person actually hired in the uh, European region to, to build Uber Eats. So that was quite a fun story because you know like Uber was then like quite a big company, but yeah. Uber Eats was like a startup inside right. Uber, right? So that was kind of like hustling around while you still have budgets to to spend. So <laughs> that was kind of a nice you know change from my previous startup 
startups, uh, my previous startups experience, because, you know, once you are working for a startup, you, you get just one chance. Exactly. And it's like, you know, you cannot yeah. fail, right? Because you get one chance to yeah. spend, that, spend that budget, because otherwise, you know, your cash flow is going to be negative. You won't get another chance. And with Uber Eats, that was like kind of completely different story because we were, we had actually huge budgets and also huge mission and just, mm-hmm. you know, like there was all about a very rapid growth and a very scalable growth over, over European markets. Yeah. I'm um, sure you could apply so that, a lot of that to what you're doing at, at Get Response today. Yeah. 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 That's, that, that's true. Like the only, the, the, like that was much more about go to market strategies mm-hmm. and also like implementing various, you know, go to market growth strategies, uh, also like optimizing pricing and learning, mm-hmm. like, you know, like how much the delivery should actually cost in various markets. And I was also running all of these various experiments, mm-hmm. pricing experiments, because we just didn't know, right? Like yeah. how, how different the, the DAC market is from the C market and from the, you know, the UK market as these are like completely different markets. Yeah. So that was super, super exciting actually to learn. And actually it, it wasn't like quite possible just to, you know, like leverage the, 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 the growth tactics that we had from the U S because European markets are quite different mm. when it comes to the tech marketplaces and, uh, the market dynamics are also like here different and the, the whole, like, you know, Europe is quite, uh, differentiated when it comes to the, the regions and the countries. And then actually, yeah. And so then that was like Uber and that was the really great, like story of, of uh, amazing growth. Mm-hmm. Uh, but actually what I was like after like two years at, at Uber, what I was actually missing was the actual, uh, like product, uh, mm. you know, like product marketing and product, product focus. Um, and I always like wanted to be like super close to the tech, right. And mm-hmm. specifically for me as a yeah. marketer, there was like nothing better than just to build and promote a tool for myself and <laughs> get response right. actually is like, you know, like it's targeting personas as, as myself. So, yeah. uh, so it's actually really, really excited to join and get a response, uh, and then quickly actually become CMO at the company. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's just been amazing seeing get response grow over the years. Cause I remember, yeah. you know, using the product way back in like maybe 2015 and it's just, it's such a, a more robust tool these days. There's so many t- different facets of get response, which I'm sure we'll get into. Uh, but yeah, to, to, to dig into email marketing, cause that really is the, the core bread and butter of the platform. Um, you know, that's the one thread that seems to glue everything together. Uh, what are, what are your thoughts just generally on the, the state of email marketing today? Like what should email marketers be thinking of, especially given the concern with privacy that we're seeing globally? Uh, yeah, so uh, like email marketing like has changed recently a lot, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna like tackle it within a second with the yeah. you know mail privacy production okay. production, but it's still like one of the key channels uh, that is very often overlooked. So mm-hmm. what I've seen actually over over the last few years is that once you know all of the entrepreneurs are kicking off with their businesses, they are first thinking, okay, let's scale the PPC advertising, mm-hmm. let's do some Facebook ads, let's you know run some, uh, let's get some budget to get some clicks, right? Mm-hmm. And actually, like, this should be the last channel that you are leveraging. Like, you know, you shouldn't be spending, like, any money at all before you get your whole uh, customer journey yeah. and, like, you know, email marketing, marketing automation uh, figure out. And then, like, you know, paid advertising could be a nice add-on for, for, for your channel mix, but it shouldn't be the first one. Uh, so it's like sometimes like, I think that email marketing is neglected, but still it's like one of the most positive, like one of the best channel when it comes to the RRI. And it gives us like tons of opportunities to, to experiment. Yeah. Uh, however, as you ask, actually, what, what has changed also is that, you know, the big change was the introduction of the mail privacy production by, mm-hmm. by Apple. And uh, that was actually announced exactly one year ago in June oh, wow. 2021. <laughs> uh, and basically, the MPP, so mail privacy production, uh, just prevents email marketers from using this invisible pixels to collect information from recipients. So like this feature that is now, you know, available uh, for users uh, of uh, Apple's mail application for iPhone, iPad, Mac computers, Apple watches, basically is uh, allowing them to, you know, mask information such as when and where the recipients open an email, what device they use to open the email and any other like, you know, online activity linked to the device. So basically, like the email data, data right now is slightly limited, specifically if uh, your recipients are using Apple email. And we know, based on the litmus research, that approximately, like uh, in the US, about 
55% of all email opens uh, are it's, it's happening on Apple devices. Wow. So basically like that, that's, that's, uh, that makes that we don't know like when and how subscribers open an email, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, that changes the whole like email marketing a lot because uh, it means that we are not really able to tell like what is the open rate, right? Yeah. Or like to run an experiment with topics like A-B tests to check out which, which subject line works best. And that, that's why all of the email marketers should much more move to the click rates, mm-hmm. uh, due to conversions and then optimize the emails based on the click rates and the conversions rather than the open rates uh, that are not really re- reliable right now. Yeah. And, and I'm glad you mentioned that because that seems to be the general trend that a lot of ESPs are taking where, uh, you know, because of MPP, mail privacy protection, you should rely less on open rates and rely more on click rates and sort of downstream metrics and, you know, sales, right? Because that's also an important yeah. metric, right? Why are we sending yeah. emails in the first place? So is that yeah. the, the how has, um, I guess, how has GetResponse um, been able to sort of support that initiative to uh, help users focus more on those downstream metrics. Yeah, so um, there are like two two things. So first of all, like you can easily like figure out like what is the split of various like devices, mm-hmm. right? So you can still see like you know if somebody opened an email with with other than you know devi- with other device than just Apple, uh, mm-hmm. let's say uh, uh, Apple phone, and that's that's a really really important to know. And we've also got all these robust statistics that we've improved even recently to give you like even more information on what's going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then like the second part is that we actually like been focused over the last over the last year a lot on the conversion and attribution tracking mm. so it means that we basically specifically for some e-commerce businesses where sales is so important we've completely like rebuilt our integrations with uh, shopify with prestashop with all the e-commerce platforms to make sure that you can integrate all of the sales data into get response so that you can precisely see like how much money uh, are the emails generating like how much are your abandoned cards like email generating etc so that you can precisely measure like the impact on the conversions, on the sales, on the incremental revenue that you are getting from the emails and not just opens, right? Because opens are like not really something that you should be looking for. So yeah, definitely like this, you know, very robust integrations that we've fully rebuilt because you're always like, you know, selling your yeah, so selling your product on a specific platform. Uh, And also like we've we've implemented you know, like the, the funnels that are more, the funnels are actually mostly targeting some B2B uh, marketers mm-hmm. who are generating leads so that you can exactly see how many leads, how many engaged leads uh, you have from a certain autoresponders flow or, mm-hmm. or, or, uh, or like email, email series flow. And this conversion is something that you should be actually like looking at rather than the open rights. Yeah, and I, I I would say GetResponse probably has an advantage here because it is such a holistic platform where it does more than just email marketing. I mean, you, as you mentioned, there's funnels, there's webinars. We haven't even talked about the webinar capabilities. Yeah. <laughs> there's the you know the ability to do live chat, web push notifications. There's so many different things. So would you agree that gives you a, a or gives users of GetResponse an advantage because all that data is then in one centralized place and you don't have to piece it together. So in a world of less data because of things things like male privacy protection, it sort of helps to use a platform that brings all of that together. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We kind of want our, our like marketers and like our customers to grow like, you know, like uh, within our platform because usually we are starting just with one or two channels and then you can just, you know, add upon that. So, so yeah. that, that's true. Obviously, some of the channels are not like working, like are, are like designed for specific, let's say, mm. business model, like, you know, web pushes are rather for e-commerce rather than mm. B2B uh, platforms, uh, while live chats are rather for B2B rather than, yeah. E commerce, right? That's that's kind of like depends on uh, on your on your goal. But that's definitely our whole strategy uh, to offer like this complete platform, like at a decent price. This is so yeah. important, specifically right now, you know, during the recession, and oh, yeah. where you should you or should get just you know like a like great great tool like that is a complete tool that grows with you uh, at a decent price um, here so that's that's what we are actually offering and definitely we're gonna do like more we are right now focused a lot on uh, specifically on e-commerce businesses hmm. and on integrations so that it's it's so that we not only we are not only offering you know, all of these features 
but like all of these features and the whole platform that is also integrated pretty well with everything that you are using, right? Yeah. So that you can have like one control deck and get response. And that's why we also have like embedded all of the data, e-commerce data to get response so that you even like don't need to log into Shopify to see like how, 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 how is your marketing and sales performing because you get everything in one place. Yeah, yeah. Integrations are so important. Whenever I'm researching a new marketing tool, the one of the first things I look at is, you know, do they have <laughs> integrations? And of course, do they have Zapier? That's the most important. Get response obviously yeah, does. Yeah. You mentioned the e-commerce integration. I know there was a big push a while back. Um, you know, depending on when someone's listening to this, in uh, in you know, 2022, there was a big push with this e-commerce uh, integration and and this e-commerce upgrade. I guess you could say. Tell us a little bit about the motivation behind that and where that's taking the get response platform yeah yeah so basically you know specifically during covid we've seen that basically the whole like e-commerce market like was accelerated by 10 years from mm -hmm. from now right so wow. that's yeah. that's kind of like amazing right like 10 years just within like two years of covid <laughs> and, and i think that uh, that's kind of that's one of the positive like changes of covid like luckily there are some like positive uh positive outcomes as well uh i guess but that's kind of like natural we see that people's uh, behavior has changed and i think that it's gonna be reversal like it's that you know like it's gonna become like stagnant right that people are mm. kind of used to buying online right now yeah. and what we've also seen and that's also like uh been uh, been presented by gartner in one of the research mm. is that the average you know like the average age of a typical like e-commerce like uh, buyer persona has increased so it also means that, you know, our moms, our like, you know, even grandmas like started, uh, you know, like uh, doing some shopping online. And that's that's amazing. <laughs> and that's also one of the trends that we as the marketers don't usually think about is that we should be designing our marketing for accessibility, right? Because mm -hmm. oh, yeah. the, the, the whole like society is getting older and COVID mm -hmm. also made it uh kind of forced it, forced actually, you know, also older uh, buyer personas to uh, start, you know, doing shopping online, using the phones, mobile phones, using some mobile apps, etc. So that's that's also like amazing to, to see. And also like as we as get response, we've seen this trend and we knew like, okay, like e-commerce, like we all want to make sure that we have, uh, that we are this, we are offering like this, like full, like, you know, marketing automation platform for SMEs and like also enterprise, enterprise e-commerce businesses where you can basically run all of your marketing and get a response that is yeah. integrated with your e-commerce platform. And that's that's what we what we what we did. Obviously, that's uh, that's what we were building uh, with with a purpose in mind to also grow on the trend, right? Because we knew mm. e-commerce is growing, so we also wanted to make sure that e-commerce customers gonna uh, gonna use us as a platform. And yeah, we spent actually a lot of developers hours and a lot of big product focus on uh, on that use case. And we still actually plan to uh, introduce a lot of new new solutions, also including implementing AI and like wow. you know, some product predictive uh, predictive uh, automations there to help all of the e-commerce managers just to improve their ROI and boost sales because eventually that's that's what they are hoping for <laughs> yeah if you're if you're a SaaS company these days in marketing and you don't have some AI tool or something on the horizon it's yeah. like you can't even compete so that's awesome to hear you mention uh, AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. But but actually, like AI is like particularly important in, for e-commerce businesses because all yeah. of the e-commerce businesses have a large scale, right? Because they have oh, like, yeah. huge, mm -hmm. you know, number of products and number yeah. of purchases. So this is the, like I think like it's much easier like to implement some uh, you know AI predictions like mm. uh, and build you have more some data. Custom, yeah. yeah, you get much more data, right? Mm -hmm. So the person, the product personalizations, like the product recommendations, they make much more sense because oh. you know you get the, the data to learn your algorithm, and that's that's why we are also like going that direction. That's awesome. I want to switch gears and, and talk a little bit about email um, best practices and some email strategies. Um, what is like a, a strategy in email marketing that you're seeing that's underutilized that our listeners should take advantage of? Um, yeah, still like this might sound a little bit cliche, but I think like still, uh, people are not using, uh, confirmed opt-in, right? Mm. So we're all thinking about like building our list, but mm -hmm. actually, uh, we are not really caring about our list quality. Okay. And what I would actually definitely recommend is to use the kind of like opt-in confirmation. And mm. obviously that will make your list kind of smaller and it will kind of limit yeah. your list growth. 
but eventually the the email list quality is gonna is gonna be much much better. And uh, basically, it's like in some countries, such as in Germany, it's like it's required, uh, right? It's forced. Yeah, 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 it's required, right? But there are not so many countries. Like actually, it's in Germany. Like there are some places in the world that where it's required, but but I also have seen that not all of the companies actually are, are forcing it. <laughs> I see that too. So, so just to explain what for anyone who's not familiar with that, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that's where uh, someone opts in and then they receive an email and they have to click yeah. a link in that email, and only at that point have they fully opted in. Yeah, exactly. So there's actually so-called also double opt-in, double right? Opt-in. So you, yeah. yeah, double opt-in, and that's that's something that definitely marketers don't like having mm-hmm. because it breaks their data and it breaks right. their targets. But eventually, you're gonna see that the open rates, the click rates, are gonna be much much better, right? Once you mm-hmm. get the the lead that is real that really wanted to be on that list, yeah. and uh, that's that's uh, and that's also a way actually to reduce spam complaints and then mm. you know in the longer run to improve email de- deliverability right because uh you need to make sure that you are keeping your uh you know like list hygiene at the, the high level mm. and so that also ties into the whole discussion about welcome series and like a welcome email and um you know once someone opts in let's say they opt in and they confirm that they want to be on this list uh it's important to nurture that contact tell us a little bit about uh your thoughts on on welcome series emails and how marketers should think about all of that. Uh, yeah, so like I think like the welcome series emails are kind of like a must have, mm-hmm. like uh, for for all the marketers, but. I would say that it's a must have only if it's like really personalized, right? Mm. So personalization is like number one rule when it comes to the email marketing. And you should have like, if you're thinking about welcome email series, you shouldn't be creating any series that just, you know, fits them all, right? Like, because unless you have a very niche product and like, you know, you're targeting just one single persona with one single product or offering and you know that, you know, like your whole list, uh, like all of the leads on your list are super uh, homogeneous, right? So they're like seem super similar. So, so uh, yeah, definitely you should be like leveraging uh, welcome series. But what you should be doing is to is to like introduce like personalization. And by personalization, mm. I don't mean just you know like including some custom fields or just you know some <laughs> <Their> attributes. <name. laughs> yeah, like that's that's just, once you're thinking about personalization, is that like, yeah, yeah, I've got it covered because I've got you know in the subject line I've right. got like the first name, right? So, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm pers- <laughs> I personalize this email. I'm good to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's it. But that's actually, I think, like ninety five percent of the personalization is just limited to that. It is. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I see it all uh, the time. But- yeah. yeah, but we should be personalizing, you know, we should be personalizing like the frequency of mm. like, you know, like using the customer segmentation, the least segmentation to, let's say, divide it into three groups. And yeah. then like, ha- let's have different, like three different frequency uh, of sending the email, like, you know, once per week, like twice per week and a little once per month, right? Because you get more and less engage, uh, engage contacts there. Also, you should be using, you know, like uh, the whole... Um, the whole, you know, behavior, the whole like user behavior on your website, right? Just to kind of like try to figure out like what is what is what was their goal, right? So you can kind of use the cookie information. Uh, you can use like his uh, yeah his behavior data to to figure out that which welcome series would be more adjusted to him. You can even start with something like you know advanced and like you know beginners welcome series, right? Just mm. to serve different information. Um, yeah, obviously like. Not not to mention the localization. Uh, so you know, like uh, localizing, mm-hmm. translating, like you know, your your content into various languages, uh, or using using the purchase history, the the facts whether this is a new lead or whether this is a, like your returning customer. That's that's something that definitely you should also personalize in terms of the content that you have inside uh, your 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 email. And then when it comes to like personalization, you should also be you know personalizing the channels because mm. uh, we are talking about welcome series for emails. But mm-hmm. depending on your channel mix, like this, you know, welcome series could be a, a mix of few channels. This could be like remarketing, like you know, paid remarketing. This could be like email and let's say web pushes, right? And some in-app, uh, also like in-app, uh, in-app uh, onboarding flow. Yep. So you should also personalize it. And specifically, if you're offering, let's say, a SaaS app, like, you know, a web app, it's so important to make sure the whole onboarding that you have inside the app or inside the mobile app 
is fully like related uh, and is fully relevant and connected to the welcome series that you mm -hmm. have that you are sending by emails, right? So here you should be also using some tools such as segment, for example, oh. or like you know just data layer to surface the the events so that you have exactly like the same. Uh, information about the user behavior from your app and in your ESPS, um, e in your email service provider, so that you know that if they completed the first step, also in the email, it will be noted that, hey, the first step completed, right? So right now, the business is that. And that's, that's like the level of uh, personalization for a welcome series that that I wouldn't be calling like welcome series, but mm -hmm. rather like, you know, this robust onboarding, onboarding. like cross channel yeah. onboarding. Yeah. Omni channel onboarding. Yeah. And, and it sounds like, so what you're referring to is what we, what get response would refer to as hyper personalization, right. Versus just regular personalization, which is just yeah. updating the, the fields in an email to give first name or company or whatever. Um, this term hyper personalization is what we would refer to this because you're using the data to do a lot more than just what the message looks like. You're, you're, when do you send the message? What message is sent? Is that correct? That's that's hyper personalization. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Like specifically in terms of the hyper personaliz personalization, mm -hmm. like usually the hyper personalization is based on the AI and machine learning. Okay. So and deep learning. So that's like kind of the last step. Uh, so I would say like first you've got this all, all of this, you know, like field insertion, let's mm -hmm. say, then you've got like customer segmentation so that you are using all of the static attributes that you have in order to segment the customers and put them into various groups. Then you have like, you know, the, the events based uh, personalization. And uh, so basically you're using all of the customer behavior, right? And then like, you know, it's customizing like the, the, uh, the, the flow here and the hyper personalization actually is like gathering the real time data from mm -hmm. multiple touch points. So, and also leveraging AI here. Uh, and the real time data also as well, because that's that's something that I don't I didn't see many many companies doing. No, yeah. Uh, but that's that's something that could work pretty 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 nice, right? If you have just like you know perform a certain action and then mm -hmm. middle tier you are getting like a personalized, let's say you know web push or yeah. or an ad. That's that's actually a hyper personalization personalization for me. Once you are also adding their the paid advertising to to yeah. the yeah, yeah. the whole picture, the whole marketing mix, which is something else Get Response helps with, right? Tell us a little bit about the the paid ad side and where Get Response fits into that picture. Yeah, so uh, as we do also like because we do also have the website builder and the landing page yeah. creator to get a response, and basically we we found out that what we what what's that was also one of the customers' requests to make it kind of easier easier to run specifically the remarketing campaigns. Mm -hmm. So I would say that the key use case for our paid ads is not like you know the prospecting campaigns, but rather the remarketing campaigns mm -hmm. where you can leverage all of the customer behavior data, right? So you can kind of target exactly like, the person who has. Let's say visited your landing page, but uh, didn't complete uh, didn't complete the whole form. So then, within like two clicks, you can just pick okay, like the landing page. Let's say was built to get a response, yeah. and then they didn't actually complete the whole form, right? Or they have just completed the pop up, like the pop up with a form, but didn't actually sign up for a webinar. And then you can easily just pick like okay, I want to target the person who like did that, but didn't did it, but didn't do that, and then like let's just run this remarketing ad with a purpose of uh, getting his, you know, sign up for a webinar or anything like like this. So it's it's a very like easy kind of drag and drop tool yeah. uh, to run specifically the paid remarketing that we know that is like one of the first things that you should be doing when it comes to the paid advertising. Cause yeah. that's just one of the channels for uh, for winning the customers and leads, leads back. Yeah, it's so important. And it's so much easier with a tool like GetResponse versus having to do this yourself and upload the list. Yeah. And you mentioned real-time yeah. data. Like you couldn't yeah. barely even do this back in the day. I remember when I used to have to upload email lists to Facebook to create custom audiences. And you know it was all manual, yeah, yeah, but now yeah, you have yeah, these yeah, integrations yeah, yeah, that make true. it easy. Yeah. That, that's true. So basically, like, instead of just, you know, downloading the whole, like, you know, like, list from the response, <laughs> uploading the Facebook, or, yep. like, even using, like, Zapier or somewhere in between, yep. you can just basically, like, do, like, one click, uh, yeah. one click and get a response and then just, you know, have the, have the campaign uh, running, right? Or if you have, like, you know, the website built or, like, the landing page built and get a response, also, like, you don't need to connect, let's say, a Google Tag Manager to your mm -hmm. website and then, like, you know, to Google Ads or, like, to Facebook mm -hmm. Ads. You, you just have it all integrated. And that's that's something that we really like take care of just to make sure because we know that sometimes all, all of the integrations, right, like might be 
quite tricky, oh, right? Yeah, so if you sure. are not a tech person, yeah. like to install all the pixels everywhere, uh, and while actually you're building it with us, then you have like the full picture in one place. Absolutely. Well, you know, the, yeah, this is, we've covered so much. I'm sure we could dig into any of these topics deeper. Um, is there anything I didn't ask you or any final thoughts you, you want to share with our listeners before we wrap up? Uh, yeah, so I, I think like, uh, just to like, uh, just to, just to, just to highlight, uh, like again, if, if I'm going to like share like one thing with all yeah. the marketers or like everyone in the world, like it's <laughs> like stop spend, stop actually spending money on like, you know, Google ads, Facebook ads, mm. and like, you know, don't, don't treat it as your number one channel. Cause, cause there are like so much more you can, you can do. And we also do know that, you know, specifically right now during the, the economic turmoil, the yeah. companies like Google and Facebook, they will be kind of also forced to increase the, uh, you know, click for, uh, like CPCs and basically increase the costs of the, the maintenance. So also increase the cost of advertising. And I think like generally the ROI of just having the single channel is not, is not, is not good. So let's think, let's think about, you know, like automating your, your, uh, your marketing also about some, some other channels such as, you know, content, webinars, et cetera, to, to boost uh, your list size and sell more instead of just thinking, yeah, I get budgets. I'm going to use Google. And yeah. That's all. That's a really good takeaway. Yeah, I see that happen all the time where people just go all in on Facebook ads or Google ads and <laughs> the rest of the funnel is like an afterthought. So I love that there's tools like GetResponse that can really come in there and and help people build up that that entire funnel. Yeah, 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 yeah that's, that's what we're trying to do. So uh, yeah, just actually like to, to sum up, like, because we've been talking a yeah. lot about marketing and a good response, yep. just let your listeners also know, like, if they want to try good response, uh, yes. we're offering like the it for free, but also like there's going to be a promo code just for your audience, uh, shared, uh, shared after the podcast. So uh, we'll be super happy to share like a decent promo code for anyone who already has a big list size and would like to get a decent price. And we know that uh, like money, uh, is and keeping the ROI positive is super important. So right now, so I hope you, your listeners will be able to save some money on on uh, yeah. the ESPS platform right now. With the discount. Yeah, and we'll put all those links in the show notes at growthmarketingtoolbox.com slash 270 or just check out the uh, show notes in the podcast app that you're listening to. But yeah, the, the pricing model for Get Responses is, is incredible, I think. Um, tell us a little bit about the freemium model and you know how, how easy it is to get started and what, what can someone do if they wanted to just try Get Response today? Yeah, you can just actually go to getresponse.com and just mm -hmm. sign up free. And that's that, that's all basically. Yeah. So the premium model and the get response free offers you uh, like a actually the free platform, including a free website builder, a free email marketing, uh, and also free forms and pop-ups creator. So basically you can start building your list. You can like, you know, set up your, you can also set up a landing page or you can build a robust website with many sub pages there. Uh, and so you can start building your traffic. You can start building your list with some conversion boosters such as pop-ups, such as, uh, you know, embedded forms. And then you can start sending some, uh, some email marketing campaigns uh, and then actually we won't charge you until you're gonna get you know like a couple of hundreds uh, mm -hmm. or like you know 1000 subscribers there so uh, it's like a free tool for everyone who is just starting out and just wants to see whether his business idea makes sense or not that's incredible yeah i've always been a, a big fan of that type of pricing model um, gives people a chance to kick the tires and uh, you know it's not one of those like very limited trials but it's a really robust uh, free plan. So I encourage everyone to check out Get Response and see if it's the right fit for them. Um, if our listeners want to connect with you or the team at Get Response or follow Get Response on social media, where is everyone the most active and where should we direct people to? Uh, yeah, you can actually reach out to us on Facebook on our official Facebook profile and uh, like our social media team is responding super quickly on all of the messages. You can also actually reach out to me directly on LinkedIn. I'm like also very responsive on LinkedIn to all of the questions. I'm also like supporting many startups, specifically in the tech and e-commerce area. So uh, also like offering some some consultations and also promoting a lot of uh, webinars that I'm running because, you know, like I really enjoy sharing my knowledge and my the benchmarks that I know. So let's let's connect on LinkedIn. 
Fantastic. And we'll put those links in the show notes. Well, Alexander, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for such a uh, well-rounded discussion. We covered so many different things. I learned some new stuff and I know our listeners did as well. So I thank you so much and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks a lot. That was great. Take care.